teams have in store for each other. Newbie on the Radiant side, OG on the Dire side. Now, before we go into this, is this matchup Newbie favored? Like, compared to yesterday's play? From from yesterday, yeah. OG, I think they were playing a bit of a, a lot of an easier opponent, to be quite fair. But I do think that Newbie also just didn't didn't look like them in their form. So for me, I would definitely put uh, Newbie as the stronger squad with all five of their natural players. Yeah. I'm actually going to back OG because oh. I think they've got confidence and I think uh, they're playing well. They look relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, I think that the pressure is off them. They're playing with a stand and as people have said, I think Will said it yesterday or the day before. He said, the thing is, if you're playing without a stand and you're playing against a team that has, you're on a lose-lose, right? Yes. If you win, everyone expects you to win anyway, and if you lose, everyone makes fun of you for losing to a team with a stand-in. So I think the pressure is entirely off OG, and that does matter. Mentally speaking, teams, you know, generally speaking, people respond poorly to pressure, yeah. even if they're very used to it. A lot of pressure uh, makes people make mistakes. We see it at big tournaments all the time. Obviously, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a minus. This is not like TI Grand Final or something like that, but pressure still affects people. I mean, TI Grand Finals, Newbie was Ooh. under a lot of pressure there. They were, and they lost. And they lost. So, Oh baby, we got a. That's a first pick. That's a Jarex Earth Spirit. That is a Jarex Earth Spirit. And they didn't. They left the tiny. They did. Wow. So I'm assuming Newbie's gonna take tiny plus one. Ten seconds remaining. It would be the obvious one, but at the same time, that is something that OG also would have predicted. Remaining. Yeah. So do you really want to pick something that might be picking directly into your uh, enemy's plan? Jarex getting picked. Like the majority of these games, he right? gets picked a lot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can see why, but um, I still think uh, I don't know. Do, do you feel like, like I always feel like, when you're first picking the carry, you're kind of leaving yourself open to being counterpicked. But Gyro doesn't seem to struggle too much. All right. hey. They don't. Will they don't touch the tiny. Do they take it? The OG should take tiny now, right? Or maybe not. Tiny's tiny's pretty good matchup versus both these. The burst you can kill kill them very easily if you get your levels advantage. Do you feel like you can just first pick Gyro, no problem? Ten there are a lot he's of teams just, that have been doing it. He's just it. good enough, it's fine. I mean, the hero's what, super strong. Right, but what do you so. not want to see when you're a Gyro? What do you really not want to play against? Uh, Jug, Life Stealer, heroes that can just get in your face. Right, so why, you know, <laughs> you're first picking it. I feel like if you're not banning those heroes, you're opening yourself up. And there's a hero that can get in your face. Puck! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And especially with Puck, now is where you like have to ban the Life Stealer. Yeah, you have to. The infest bombs can just ruin the gyrocopter just to get on to close the gap. Kind of cool. Puck versus Willow. Willow is easily burstable in these type of scenarios for both Earth Spirit and Puck. There's a lot of lockdown and uh, team fight coming up from OG. Yeah, Willow's not necessarily uh, AOE. Like, like there's AOE damage, yes. not necessarily targeted. Exactly. And obnoxious little sort of winged creatures. <laughs> <laughs> we already have three flying heroes. Yeah, I mean, look at look at the Willow and the Gyro. It's just like these turbines <laughs> spinning and these like wings flapping. Like a couple flapping. of hummingbirds here. Ridiculous. <laughs> well, let's take a look. We have a Life Stealer band. I mean, if you have a puck, you already have that vessel. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We're gonna remove that one. Do you remember when, when the no leg strat, when Bruno mentioned that? That, yes. that was like a groundbreaking piece of Dota commentary. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, I, uh, oh, Bruno. We miss him. We do. So they ban out the Dragon Knight. Very good versus the Puck traditionally because it's sure there's a projectile speed on the stun now, but it's still always going to be pretty strong versus the Puck. And that dual core is just always going to be pretty strong, Gyro DK. Ten seconds remaining. We need Owen to translate. We do. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't please. Oh. All this <laughs> That's a one. Just for the record, Owen does not speak a single word of Mandarin or Cantonese or. Uh, or if he does, he's, he's been hiding it very well. He barely speaks English. <laughs> he barely types it. Have you ever read a text message from Owen? Yeah, you can't oh read anything. Oh my god, you have you, to be. You can English. understand it. Yeah, because it's in English. Yeah. English. Oh, he, he, for me, it's mostly smileys. <laughs> Oi, Ted, I'm going with me, mates. Get some dinner, some for you. What? Like that, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. literally. <laughs> he types in it. He in always it. types in it. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah, it's in it. I know in it, yeah. I know in it. I'm getting it. And mop it and, you know. Mop yeah. oh, I said you might get some dinner with me. W-I-F, whiff. Whiff, yeah, whiff. <laughs> <laughs> what a legend. So right. Viper being taken out, Viper too. Mm. Okay. Playing Gyro versus Viper. You're very, Viper's very 
absorbent to the damage mm -hmm. the tower does because it's mostly magical early and you're always going to get viper strike throughout the game so also you can't avoid hitting him when you use the flat cannon right yeah so you're, you're gonna get uh, get the effect of the this the corrosive skin the next band is a little bit surprising yeah i was thinking the same thing is that uh maybe uh you know a sign about what's uh, what to come for what's to come i think they're they took out a lot of kaka's heroes already Right? They've taken the Earth Spirit for themselves, so that's one of Kaka's. Yep. They banned the Naga, they banned the Sand King, they're banning like all the I heroes. I mean, they've got yeah. Disruptor Sand King as like, the newbie opening anyway. So. What, four, what four heroes are actually left, if, unless he's playing the Willow? There's really not much. Like Elder Titan, Tusk, Naga, Sand King, Nyx, these Elder all these heroes taken gone. out. So yeah. we've seen Willow as both a 5 and a 4 position. We've seen, obviously, yesterday Pilot I played Willow, but yeah. um, when EG picks Willow, it's normally crit playing it. Yeah. So, who knows? Maybe it is Kaka. Well, they're thinking. I, of, I often think sometimes maybe just targeting one player in the draft is at least you counter one guy. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to counter every draft they could possibly go, but if you pick one player and say, let's ban all his okay. good heroes. So this is probably that hero. We've seen Kaka. I think the last yeah. last time I saw Kaka play it was what? In ESL Hamburg even. It was like a, quite a long time. Yeah, he's played it once since then, but that's the one that comes to mind for me. Yeah. How'd it go? He was versus a Broodmother. It was not good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago, though. A rough one. They ended up putting Kaka as core or shaker. Ooh. Yeah, jeez. Whoa. Oh god, I thought that was Invoker for a second. A, this is an OG special though. It's, it's the Oracle and the Dazzle that was normally uh, flies, flies heroes, the saving heroes. Yeah. On, the, on the screen that we've got here, where you can only see, like when the, the the hero animates in, for yeah. uh, like on the draft screen. All I saw was the cape at the bottom. I was like, oh my god. They third pick in fire. <laughs> but no. Uh, very good versus Gyrocopter, Shaker. All these, all the first three hero picks of Nubia are, for the most part, magic damage until Gyro gets online. So Fate's Edict is a very, very strong ability in this game. The, mm -hmm. the second ability for Oracle, right. which makes you magic immune. You know, Mid One was saying that the the one hero that he absolutely hates playing against at, of, of all heroes is Oracle. I heard really? him saying that. Yeah, it's like it's like he wants to be able to do something, and all of a sudden it's just Oracle turns up, you can't get the kill. Like, hey, that's it. The delayed stun of Dark Willow. Can you purge that? I'd imagine yes. Nice. That is really good, actually. Yeah, that sounds really good. I mean, cool. you can use it off, right? So I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you sh in theory, you should be able to, yeah. Good call, Sheev. Well, that already, like, I've, like, this is a horrible Dark Willow game. Puck is going to get a Yules. Oracle can already remove the things. Well, the roots are still annoying. The, the roots, roots versus annoying Earth Spirit, as well as Puck, are going to be obnoxious. And we st I think that hero is still a little bit of untapped oh. power. I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, okay. you, you've and got the, the combo, really though, Sheebs. You've got the root with the cooldown, yeah. Echo Slam. You've got Enchantra standing behind, plinking away at you. So. Yeah, true. Okay. Ooh, so KP going to be playing Ench. We saw Mind Control have a spectacular game yesterday mm -hmm. on the Enchantress. Some, some really dirty impetuses. Yeah. The, the downtown Hail Mary impetuses. <laughs> This one can be nice too because it's pure damage. So this is yep. the one that just pierces right through that oracle. A, a good pick. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that enchantress pick a lot. So what are they gonna get mad here? Because I, I, I mean, this is S4 off lane puck, right? I'm assuming. Yes. Either yeah, either they run some weird lanes and they put the puck mid, or it's gonna be S4 playing puck off lane. But he would be playing the puck no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Would they go back to the razor? Death Prophet is still in the pool as well. We've we've mostly seen Seb play Death Prophet and Razor at the moment, so there's Wait. not that much to choose from. I think mm -hmm. the problem with the Razor for him is it, it's very he he he's never going to catch Enchantress. Like he gets a link on her, she's gone. Yeah. Uh, Earthshaker and Dark Willow don't care so much, and if he goes in the Gyro, he needs to live long enough. I mean, the Oracle can enable that. Yeah. But he needs to basically stand there, getting enough damage off. But they've got a lot of burst damage, and on they can fear the away from team. the Link as well. Man, maybe they could still go something like Huskar. Even though there's an Enchantress, the first three are full magic damage. Ooh, Oracle they can Huskar? Actually, yeah, if they dirty. can actually just be dirty like that, they could do something really cool. We just all yep, three we fell star the silent. I just heard it, right? Because, um, just heard the H word. I, I heard the H word, yeah. I, was, yeah. I think it comes. it's really cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good Man, shout, Yanis. Hey, hey, hey. And he said that before. We I said heard it before no I heard him. I did definitely. He absolutely did. Yep. We, just heard, we just heard No Tail say we need to win the Huskar battle. So I think he's saying if we don't win the Huskar lane, we're in trouble. Yeah. It's always this fear, right? If you see these like three big magic damage heroes and you've got Oracle, the Huskar's always got to be something on the table. So, mm -hmm. newbie, what can they... I mean, the Enchantress is going to be... can be pretty yeah, neat. Yeah, that's good. You know, the... The pure damage impetus, but also the uh, enchant. Mm -hmm. Enchant now dispels, so you can also dispel the inner vitality oh, off nice. of the Huskar, yeah, yeah. which is pretty nice. This is going to be. This is the thing. Is I feel like newbie's draft is is. Uh, it makes more sense to me in terms of 
I think it's execution. You know what I mean? It seems it seems a bit bit easier to execute. It's simpler. It's more straightforward. Yeah, it's simpler, but I mean this is this is definitely a pretty good Huskar game yeah, right now. This is a good Huskar game for sure. This is devastating. What can they actually pick last? He can close on the gyro, he can ignore the, the magic damage from Earthshaker and from Willow. The he the thing is he can't really go on her because she just does the, the dark whatever it's called thing where she disappears. What is it called? Shadow Realm. Shadow Realm. She just does that and you can't really go on her, I guess. And but it, I mean it it's a way to get health off Enchantress, right? Without just having a right clicker. They've got a lot of catch though, that's the one thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Like with the Earth Spirit Puck, I think that's what enables the Huskar a lot in this game. Also, I mean, geez, Oracle's stun See, I don't know how, what the range on that thing is. Like it seems to be a billion miles. Like when he's it, it's so obnoxious. Yeah. Is there not something that is easy to pick in the last pick to deal with the Huskar? Like something very heavy heavy oh, physical, geez, like a Huskar or not a Huskar, a terror blade or something? And there's a razor. Okay. That's, the, that's going to be the, the, razor. the mad hero, right? So I think I'm, I imagine No Tail's going to play Huskar. And yeah. So razor, maybe something. Is there still Death Prophet in the pool? Yes, she is. So that's that's heavy physical. Yeah. Nice silence um, there as well. Wow, to this is going to be an interesting game. Yeah, this it is, really is. I mean, this is going to see if Newbie can really take the punch because this is this is a pretty good Huskar pick. And like Razor, also traditionally, you want a high physical damage right, versus Huskar, right. so Razor is going to counteract that. that. Yeah, exactly. I was just thinking if they would have picked something, I don't know, like maybe a, I don't think they they could take a PA or something like that just I to think try and burst the Huskar. What down. OD or like? Oh, oh so maybe you just avoid Huskar and take buildings instead. That's one thing you could do. Okay. It's uh, it's an interesting game, you guys. Yeah, there's. I mean, we get a Huskar up right off the bat. Yep. Uh, and at the start, Frog, huh. you said you wanted to back newbie. Are you sticking with that? No, I mean I'm, I'm I really like this Huskar pick. Yeah, you're going I'm for gonna, the Huskar. I'm gonna switch around to OG. I told you, I told you. You, you should have believed me in the first place. <laughs> yeah, you're you're sticking with OG oh, as well. Oh, neat. Ted? I'm going with OG 100. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, there's a lot of stock put in here in this uh, in this Huskar pick working out. Let's find out if that Huskar will work out for OG. Is over to Capitalist and Blitz for game one. OG have been struggling lately, and it seems like in these dire circumstances where they are in elimination against the TI finalist newbie, they go back to their old ways and pick a Huskar lineup. Huskar lineups. I like them. It looks pretty good for it, too, because there's a lot of magic damage. There is going to be the physical damage of the Lycan and the pure damage of the Enchantress. Otherwise, seems like a pretty good uh, Huskar lineup. I have not seen Huskar in some time. Like, I have no idea how this is going to go. They also gave Mad the Razor, though, that he was ultra successful with yesterday. Yeah. He's quite strong with that. Feels like uh, Mad is going to be taking kind of that Matumba Man role where he's playing like Vipers and Razors and those sort of oppressive heroes. Yeah. I like that they've changed things up, too. If you notice from day one to day two, uh, they were making Mad go mid, and now they're just saying, like, it's okay. S4 is a great mid, we're going to put him back mid, yep. and we're going to make you play a little bit differently. They did that in some of the uh, qualifiers as well. Um, I think that was mostly when S4 was playing like Leshrac or something, but we'll see how, uh, well, we'll see how they do. Yeah, Just Return because of S4 mid though is pretty hype. What do we want the matchups to be for OG? Uh, I think they want to avoid the Huskar versus the Enchantress, if possible. Which is why they're going aggro. Oh, no, no tails. I guess you have you the have razor Puck. versus the lichen doesn't sound bad. I think this is okay. I'm trying to think right now. You seem pretty hesitant to give this your stamp of approval. I think this is fine. This no is tail can definitely ideal. challenge KP to start with, just because Untouchable slows you down a bit with the attack speed. Every single shot, you're gonna feel the burn. Yeah, the spears. This is probably much better actually, because you want the Huskar to be able to get solo experience, and um, you want to keep the Lycan down, or what? I'd imagine that the Razor is more meant to be like the anti carry this game. Okay. So you're trying to shut down Mugi. Yeah. More than you're trying to have a good game on your Huskar, because your Huskar with like two items does Huskar things, anyways. And then we'll have our mid matchup, which is the Gyrocopter of SDC versus S4's mid puck, which, as you were saying earlier, is kind of hype having S4 back in the mid lane. Yeah, I appreciate this. It's been a while since I've seen him return to this role. As a mid player, where did you frequently look up to S4 
as kind of like the standard of laning phase? I played against them a while back. This was like when Envy first made the team, but it was different. It was like Envy, Bulldog, S4, and then they had two randoms mm. that I can't remember who they were. I think it was like yeah. Black and somebody else, if you recall. Um, and I, I was like, this guy's flipping amazing. This was before like MMR or anything, so you just had to like play against people and figure out by feel how good they were. Yeah. And he was so fast. Did he stomp you? Um, I think we did well in one matchup. It was like Wisp CK versus I was tied mid, and tied does fine <laughs> in that. I think we crushed them in that one, and then we got destroyed by Bulldog's NP and his puck. Mm. The game after. I recall the score was something like 22 to like one or something. No tail. More damage you deal to him, the higher attack speed he gets. He's just ignoring that untouchable entirely at this point in time and laying in the damage to KP. Now he does have a heal out and they're actually going to challenge No Tail here. The man should get the Fisher block. No Tail's going to hide away in the trees, gets off the healing salve. Now we'll fight against Kaka. They didn't expect No Tail to be this healthy, so Kaka's definitely dying here. They figure the Burning Spears is going to be enough to take Kaka out. Meanwhile, they do manage to pick up that first blood though on No Tail. So well worth it already, the aggro dual lane of Newbie. It's working out mighty fine. Yeah, really good trade by them. You take that trade every single time. You're going to get the one for one, but you kill the Huskar. He also popped the salve is the important part. Oftentimes, yeah. like, if you trade regen, it's okay. But he was actually the one that had to use the majority of the regen there. And he didn't get the first blood, obviously. But mid lane is going really well right now for OG. 13 and 6 for S4. Yeah, he is crushing S triple C. And this is... The premier Chinese mid. He does have one hell of an attack advantage, uh, advantage over this gyrocopter. He does. Gyro does not start with very good stats when it comes to right click. And he can't really challenge a puck too well with either Rocket Barrage or Homing Missile because of phase shift. Yeah, he's just going to phase shift it every single time. Why STCC throwing it out there? No Tail just hard. going for it. Does have the nature's attendance though, and they're gonna turn. No tail's gonna oh, be gonna blocked in once again. again. Great play from Kaka. They just keep this up and fly every single time. He's trying to throw the Fates Edict on KP to prevent him from getting off those auto attacks. Just not working. Bottom lane, mad. Gonna drain all the damage away from Moogie. Now he is gonna be stunned up here, so they're not gonna be able to get a kill on either one of these. And this is not the kind of start that you want on a Huskar, even though you don't need a ton of items. Like dying like this, just to the one stun, coughing a little bit too much damage. Trying to get way over aggressive too. That's only level one spears. It's not that scary. KP's got enough heals and now he's got the creep too to mess with them even further. Yeah. Do you think he's gonna get extra levels of nature's attendance to try and like block out the burning spears? Uh I think you still go to an untouchable, right? Yeah. No tail, gonna be blocked oh, in he's here. Got nice again. hit, Kaka. The Earth Shaker is such a good support Ooh. against the Huskar for this reason, but he managed to get through the trees and back to the safety of the tower. Barely gets out of there. Doesn't even have boots, so I thought they were gonna kill him, but. Yeah. No tail. Gotta be careful here. They don't have any regen left on either of them. I guess technically he's got a fairy fire to work with, but right, one stun and he will die. They've switched up the lanes. Moogie's going to go mid against S4. SCC was struggling real bad in CS. And same goes for Lycan against that Razor, so. And Lycan with this high amount of regen, he's got a wand. He doesn't care too bad. Mad's going to snipe out the rocket out of the air. Good news, though, for newbies. This top lane is still going above average. S fly looked like he was going to be locked out for a second. Do you know how the Brambles works against the rolling boulder? Like, does he stop if he gets if he runs into one of those roots? We'll have to keep an eye on it. It's an interesting idea. Either way, they're gonna roll in. Oh, missed that one. Thought Faith was gonna back up. Not the case here. He's gonna throw a stun onto Mad. Now SEC is gonna come in from the side. Rocket Barrage already onto Mad. He's taking a ton of damage away from that Dark Willow, though, so SEC does have to retreat. Gonna be clipped by the stun here, but Mad can't really keep up after all. He's only got brown boots. Huskar gonna be caught again here. Kaka just keeps on nailing him with these Fisher blocks. The Earthshaker Enchanter's dual lane is just destroying Big Daddy No Tail. Yeah, that is a powerful lane. And I do think it stops, because I think it has the same interaction as the Pillar Pit. Mm. Actually, that I would make sense. I don't play Earth Spirit. This is the problem. Don't trust anything I say here, guys. All right. There are definitely people. 
If there's one thing, Austin, just say whatever you think it is, and if it's incorrect, the internet will correct you. That's true. It definitely stops it. Yeah, 100%. Somebody will correct us. I'm loading up the chat right now. All right, OG switching up as well. They have to get this Huskar better laning phase, so he's now going to go mid he, against the Lycan. S4 will replace him at the top lane. Like, he... I, I don't know. He's got to be better about this. Like he's dying way too often. Yeah. The kind of start that he's had. Like if you look at his items, like, what... That... I just felt like he wasn't, like, really that experienced with the Huskar. Right? He was doing that thing where he's like, oh, Huskars always look so strong when they just, like, Burning Spears you. But level one Burning Spears is not that good. No, it's not. You need to wait until you're, like, level three, level four to really be that invulnerable, invulnerable like, challenge king where you just go for any fight. They're not even... None of them have said anything useful. Now they're just building golden freezes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you expect it from Twitch chat? That is not the place. No, people, when they have the correct information, they want to be credited, which is uh -huh. why they will hit you up on Twitter. I see, I see. This is the next level. I just It's like when I asked them to vote for Ghostick. Yeah, they definitely for yesterday. Like they that. did not. They they ignored me as KP is going to get gone on. Okay, you good Jurex. luck Picks to kick back. back. No Tail is getting out. Some damage. Well, Fisher block in, though. KP, he's going to take quite a bit here for the Burning Spirits. It's going to be real close. 5 HP. 5 HP again. Oh. But he's going to get out. Jerix has no abilities. He's not going to be able to catch him. The heal versus the Burning Spear. That looks so cool. It was both uh, Nature's Attendance as well as the Oracle heal. That was, uh, was pushing his HP up. Just enough, it seems. Matt is going to challenge here. They do manage to get the Coil onto Faith as well as SEC. With the Orb on through, they're going to be able to kill both of them. Now, the Lycan's going to come on through and try and take Matt out of the equation. They certainly are going to be able to do that. Kaka hoping to be able to catch. Nice hit with the Enchant Tobe and the follow-up Fisher to chain stun the Puck. So it ends up being a two for two. OG lose their two cores in the equation, though. Not the type of trade that they want to make, especially since the puck was doing the best in the game so far. I don't know. They they keep shifting things around. No tails once again back at top. Doesn't have boots. Trying to build his way to that armlet. And KP is going to be pretty happy to see that. Yeah, he's about to hit six too. And, and that, we saw what Enchantress does yesterday. Yeah. Uh, any of these any of these ranged damage dealers just destroyed by this enchantress. That was so cool. Abed's like, I've got a BKB, what now? Dead. She's like uh the new bloodseeker, you know? Run from her, take more damage. Actually useful. Oh, bottom third razor. Not going to be Bad. trapped by the brambles, and nor is he going to be blocked by the fishers, so he might be able to get through this one. The wolf trying to block him in, not going to happen. Mad turning and fighting a little bit. Sater's going to be able to purge, slow him down, but now Jarek's actually going to kick Mugi into what the range of that tower. They're going to try and finish off the Lycan here. Mad daring it against this Faith. Dark Willow, oh my god, Faith, Faith you got to be careful! Oh, they do manage to get the kill on the Razor. Meanwhile, Jarex is still trying to run down Mugi, but Mugi, his HP regen is actually outdoing all the right-click damage of Jarex, and now Jarex has to roll himself to safety here. Dude, that better was... Better roll soon, because Fisher is coming back up. Yeah, Mad did so well juking that for so long. Got himself out of that labyrinth. As they did manage to kill it, kill KP by the way up at top. Okay, so that's good. Uh, that's good pickup. Yeah. Now the Huskar is starting to catch up as a result of a lot of the space, and uh, he's getting pretty close to Armlet now. Yeah, like that. That kill was massive for them. And when they both hit level six, the impetus doesn't really do a whole lot for you, right? Because life break. He's just gonna get right on top of you. Roll in, bottom lane onto the gyrocopter. Another great kickback from Jarex. They're gonna drop the ultimate though from SCC to slow down Mad and see if Mugi can get a kill here. They actually go for the Fisher block onto Max, so Mugi is gonna change targets. Echo Slam slowing him down even further. Not gonna finish him up. He managed to get in the oh, tree. Jarex, so Jarex blocks, blocks him in. Beautiful setup that might just allow Mad to be able to get away, but Lycan Form is still going for a few more seconds. Gets one last hit in, and that's all Mugi needs to be able to get the. Double kill. TP out. No tail. Not going to be able to get this kill. Knows it too. He's just going to try and pick up the neutrals. Jump forward by the puck. S4. Hunting for Kaka. As the high levels of silence here. Oh, if he gets chain stunned, not going to happen. Though, he doesn't get the opportunity to pop the phase shift. He's going to be hit by a combination of stuns here. Still going to go for it, but Gyrocopter is going to TP into the shrine, so S4 could not commit. Yeah, and S4 not as good. 
at dodging the brambles. Okay, he just walks into it again. That was the third one. Mad should give him some tips here. No tail made the rotation down, but nothing for him. All the uh, the pubs that Mad has been grinding, they have prepared him for the obnoxious Dark Willow hero. Yeah. It's KP trying to put pressure on this top lane now. That rotation from No Tail gonna slow down his farm quite a bit. Is KP? All right, good jump hit. down here. They are trying so hard to right click him. Mad, one more. One more hit in. That's all they need. That'll be enough. He struggled for it. S4 should have. Oh, he did orb. He was trying to get the last hit. Kaka is here trying to slow down this push, but they've got a siege wagon. And they're going to need a whole lot more heroes, newbie. I think they're willing to take a trade off here. They're taking the mid tier one tower. S4 is going to try and interrupt this one. Great coil. The setback, though. Nice terrorize out from Faith. Moogie is going to have his TP stop. He's going to go for the kill on the Earth Spirit, trying to run away from Mad. Is going to be successful in that. In fact, SCC is going to challenge Man, gets that kill. And S4 has to phase shift to dodge the missile. OG. A little bit late attempt there to be able to defend their tier one tower. And that fight goes pretty miserable for them. Yeah. Defensive towers, just as a rule of thumb, you have to be there early before they pressure up like that's where the read in dota comes is you get there before you read the intention you set up two or three heroes and you make it difficult you spam out the waves if you arrive that late it's almost always going to be a disaster and that's exactly what happened there s4 invis puck with a veil of discord already oh that is a blink dagger completed on this earth shaker already he's gonna try and blow up kp perhaps but the no, light has already spotted out oracle they managed to get the centaur stun fly is not gonna be able to get off his saving grace and echo slam onto no tail he's dead as well s4 with his invis rune got nothing out of the whole entire situation in fact he's still in trouble Mugi has plenty of lichen form to still try and run down s4 kp is gonna get those impetus shots in as well double kill for Mugi again 12 to 7 as Newbie continue to pick up pace. That was so well done by Newbie. Mugi just instantly pops the form, gets the centaur on top of Fly, gives him no opportunity to get that ult off. No Tail now put into a position where he has to ult in to try to save his Oracle, but at that point, nobody was really ready to fight, but now they might take a fight. Oh, SCC very the much separated from his allies here. Gonna be caught by this snare of Fly. He's dead, 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 dead. dead. I'm not sure what that was. Why did he stick around so long? Yeah, he was in no man's land. OG completely ready for that one. And it with the pick like off they like go that, for Roche. they're gonna be able to do Roshan, or at least try it. They know there's no Ro there's no Echo Slam. Yeah, and they have better vision here too. And no shape shift from the Lycan. There's a lot of things down actually. Yeah, no tell you gotta be. So careful. it's up to Dark Willow to get a really good terrorize. Great brambles to start things off. No-Tail's actually super low. He may die to the wolf. Not going to die to the wolf, but it's Seven Mad who's going to be caught inside the ensnare. Going to be saved by Fly for the time being. They got to disengage off of this. This is no Roshan attempt, that's for sure. Coil goes down. Kaka going to be caught inside that one. Doesn't want to break the coil. Is going to take the orb damage, but S4 can't make the commitment. Has to bounce away from the shrine. So they're all going to be pretty low here on the side of OG. They're going to shrine up, though. I don't think Newbie can really do Roshan themselves, so. Who popped the shrine on the side of OG? Uh, it was oh, the supr Oh my god. We're just gonna. They saw that and they're like, oh my god, can we do Roshan? Like, that's what KP's doing inside, right? He's like, what? what? He instantly dead. spams the well played. I. No Tail has not had the smoothest of games. Like, that was definitely an error. There's a reason Miracle was the Huskar player, right? Yeah. And they're going to go for Roche themselves as a result of this. And OG, they've got to get here fast. Okay, well, don't worry. This is all an elaborate trap set up yeah, by yeah, Big yeah. Daddy No-Tail. He's already back, ready to fight. He has baited Newbie into a false sense of security to tempt this Roshan. He's going to try and challenge KP. KP. Let's go. KP is just going to try Jack and get in. Eric's managed to get the kick in. Where's the Aegis? Where's Where's the Aegis? He's picked it up. No, Moogie managed to pick it up just in time. They may have gotten the Roshan kill, but can they actually win this fight against the Aegis that Newbie managed to snag up there? S4. 
Orb is up, so he should be able to get away safely. No Tail, meanwhile, does manage to chase down KP finally, but has no HP. So Moogie's going to be able to get that kill at the very end of Shapeshift once again. Going to be slowed down by the Ensnare of Fly. Here comes the Gyrocopter, though. Ready to lay down the damage. Nice kick away there and a roll out from Jerex. Nice double save by him. Fly's going to try and make a TP out. That is a futile effort, my friend. They have plenty of stuns from Kaka with the early Blink Dagger. And Jerex kind of made that okay. He got the last hit on the Roshan. It's a good amount of gold, but more deaths on the side of OG. They've got a Huskar strat, so they have to be the ones to play aggressively. A lot of single target focus on their team and their cores with the Razor and the Huskar. So they need this to go a lot better because this Lycan will start to get out of control. Normally, when you play against like Wisp or Oracle lineups, you obviously focus that hero first. Yeah. Uh, the best case scenario is that No-Tail does enough damage that he deters you from going on his supports. But Moogie's so fast, and there's not enough disable on the side of OG that he can just pop the ult and force Fly to use the ult on himself. Newbie will consider that a team fight when they grab the tower. We're seeing in so many of these occasions the the kick from the Earth Spirit, the coil. These are just momentary respites, and the Lycan's just going to run for that back line every single time anyway. Yeah, that that death, though, to the neutrals, that, was, that laid out a disastrous set of events. OG themselves wanted to go for the Roshan. They Even have at the to end of that, that fight, area. I think No Tail had better. I think he had an opportunity to get an armlet toggle off there when the Lycan was going for that last hit. Uh, and, I think that one he was pretty dead though. You sure? Because Shapeshift ran out too. He got one hit in the shape. Whoa, what is this? A kill on S4 Puck? No, Kaka. He doesn't have the damage by himself. Well, he's with just that trying to doubt, distract. He's trying to buy time right now. S4 does have a TP, but he doesn't have a blink. And look at what Kaka's doing. He's just chasing him around, trying to buy time. He's going to fake the TP. He's actually going to complete it. But, but they've already lost the tier three, and the melee Rax is about to fall as well. Matt is looking to be able to steal some of their damage. Can't really do it. SCC drops the call down. Razor is going to be protected by that, but they've already gotten the melee Rax, so there's no need to push for more. Jerex is going to try and get some vengeance here. Yeah, S4 needed to be there for that. He's going to be the hero that clears out these waves for them. But he didn't have the blink quite yet. And with the Aegis available on the side of Newbie, it seemed like they were reluctant to defend that at all. OG just look like a mess right now. 18 minutes into this game with the Huskar lineup, 6k down against Newbie. Yeah, and KP starting to get tankier. He's going to go for the Hurricane Pike. That's going to be his counter to the Huskar. They almost have the completed Necronomicon 3 for a Lycan as well. That's a big power spike for him. And look at the net worth right now. Kaka is third in the game. Oh, he just got passed up by S Triple C. He is so farmed as his Earthshaker. He has more than almost every other try court. and farm some creeps, though. He's going to be caught in the process. Blown up by S4 and crew. That is a big pickup. And they grab the Tier 2 tower at bottom. That is not support Earthshaker net worth that you just grabbed out of that. Especially with the uh, kill streak that he had at the same time. Yeah, that was a very, very decent kill for them. So Jerex is looking for it. I mean, he's constantly been on the hunt this game, trying to salvage this sort of start. 0-1-7, and seven, only has one death in a game like this. Actually, both supports on the side of OG haven't really died. The majority of these are going to come from their cores. So, OG, they may be down right now, but they need to continue to try and be aggressive. What do you think the step is for them? Are they waiting for any items, or is it just an opportunity thing? Uh, they're probably waiting for the Aegis to fade, but look at what Newbie's doing right now. Like They're going to be really smart, use the time, try to transition it into a push. Because this mid wave is pushed in, if you take any fight outside the base, you will get the top racks yeah. or the bottom racks. So they're going to ping the shrine instead. I think they know they were too late. So Moogie's going to get on top of that shrine, just continue to further build this gold lead. S4 has been trying to split push and create some space at the same time. So he's going to return back to the bottom lane, shove it out some more. Yeah, and Kaka, he's just looking around. Already has a Shadow Blade complete. Not a normal support Earthshaker at all. Aegis, going to be expiring soon, newbie. I've actually already lost it. Are they still going to go for the high ground push, though? OG 
We're kind of thinking about going into that Radiant Jungle area, but they need to actually head back to the base and defend against this. This time around, now. they will have the S4 Puck to be able to throw out the orb and Mad to lay out Plasma Field. So it won't be so easy to just throw a bunch of uh, neutrals and creeps at the Tier 3. Yeah, last time they just walked up. No tail. Gonna get bonked on the head. The Brambles is there too. The here comes the no stun. It's gonna take a lot of damage here. KP actually lost vision there for a period of time. Trying to force out Fly's ulti. That is a decent push coming into the bottom wave. They've actually got to stop that. So Kaka's going to be the one to run back. And he's invised up seeing if anybody was silly enough to stick behind. They did manage to grab the mid-range racks, though, the creeps. Oh, really? Yeah, not notice that. That unsuccessful of a push attempt. Just a little bit more gold. Blink Tagger almost there for Jerex's Earth Spirit, but on the other side of the table, you've got the Shadow Blade complete for Kaka. You've got a lot of items on KP to make him nice and tanky, and SCC is actually going to be working on an MKB to deal with the uh, Halberd build from the Huskar. So to make sure he's got some better physical damage. A double damage Huskar is going to run into SCC, but a BKB already popped out. And now no tells damage is going to be a looking a little bad. Terrorize sends it back. Kaka is looking to be able to throw out the control as soon as Fly and his false promise is done for. No tells going to take a lot of damage. Can't actually protect him at all. And Fly is going to be next one picked up. Fisher and slammed down by Kaka. And Mugi doesn't even have to be here for this. The highest net worth on their team. They just have so much control for this Huskar. S4 starts cutting creep waves because they know what's about to happen. Newbie are just going to march down mid and go into that top lane of racks. Yeah. Matt, no. trying to do what he can here. Has He's, a solar crest. It's not going to be able to stop the creep wave fast enough. Backdoor protection is down. So, Newbie, this full lane of racks is going to be theirs. S4 dealing with some of the creeps, but not all of them, as they are spamming for their lives. Oh, Mad nice gets double stun for the Brambles, and here comes that Echo Slam. Kaka will finish this one off in style. Dodge, Fade Shift. S4 gonna live a little bit longer, trying to get the Ensnare onto two of them there. They're actually gonna be able to get some really good AoE damage out from Jerex as well, but it's gonna be Moogie in the front lines, just challenging the supports, making sure the Fly ends up going down, breaking the Static Link as well. Jerex, chased by a homing missile, looking to be able to get back to his fountain. He'll be okay. After all, Newbie have already taken the objective that they wanted taking the top lane of Rax and will retreat. They don't want any losses here to OG. No chance at a comeback. Yeah, and KP might be isolated here, Jerex. He's looking for it right now. They know he's around the area. They've got the ward. They spot him all the way through. They need something out of this. They force the buyback. Jerex blinks forward, and they're going to catch him. Oh, they caught him. KP. He is definitely dead. It's not going to make up for... No, he's wait, 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 what? Jerex already threw the kick. Oh, Jerex. You gotta hold on to that stun, buddy. Yeah, they used the coil already. KP just gets out for free. Yeah. They desperately needed something. He apologizes, he knows. He says, my bad. This has just been a symphony of errors on the side of OG. They probably get one more attempt at the Roche fight, but they are steadily falling behind. Yeah, there's only so much you can say about having a stand-in. This is looking like the entire OG roster is just not performing up to the standards of the past. Yeah. And up at top, SCCC, just pushing in the wave, S4, trying to deal with it. And if you're newbie, you're probably just waiting for the next Roshan. Yeah, they're gonna hold it out here. Tier one and tier two still left in that bottom lane, so get that next Rosh, Aegis Cheese. Just feel comfortable in your game one victory. It's kind of all but assured to OG. It would be one hell of a comeback if they could actually start winning some fights. So yeah, see that win probability. Thanks, Dota Plus. 98%. That graph, everything just ticking upwards. Newbie just occasionally going into the Roche Pit trying to see when it is going to be up. And we know that it's going to be up in 35 seconds. What is it about um, teams... It feels like everyone's trying to play so fast that they get these rosters. I'm thinking like the Shadow Shaman core. Um, you know, this one is another example. We saw a Draw Ranger strat, I think, at PGL, where everything has to go right in the laning phase and you snowball from there. It feels like we're back to, to teams trying out those kind of like crazy push lineups that just 
cannot fail in the laning phase. Yeah, I mean, this one's a little bit more specific because you, because you have a Huskar. Mm. Like, these kinds of heroes put you not necessarily on, like, the biggest of timers, but like, if you're playing this, like, ultra late game with this much single target, like, do you really want to play against newbies lineup? Yeah. Probably not. And there are these heroes now in Dota that just do so well in the laning phase, like Razors and Enchantresses. Do you think part, part of it is the, the talents that these heroes like Huskar scale a bit better into the late game than they used to if you're successful early? Yeah, I mean, they're trying to make the lane, they were trying so hard to make the laning phase work. And normally when you have a Razor, you get to be really flexible about that. Yeah. But I think Newbie just had really good heroes to deal with that. And the top lane went way too well for them. Yeah, they stuck around too long in that top lane, too. I think they lost the Huskar three different times before they tried to go for the lane switch. Yeah, I think when Notel died the third time, that should have been the signal, like, this is not working. All right, our boy Tsunami finally hit us up. Non-interrupting routes like Pit or Bramble don't cancel a rolling boulder. Nice, are, nice. It's already in cast. Thank you, Tsunami. Thanks for clarifying. Learn something new about Dota every day. That is a crazy thing, right? We've been playing this game for over a decade. All these intricate mechanics. I just never want to say anything like for certain. What's that? I never want to say anything for certain because yeah. Dota is always. A and bit mechanics like that. change as well. Yeah, like the rocket one from Gyro. Oh. Or uh, I was I said pure damage from Phoenix. Mm. Magic damage now. I mean, we're all just morons playing this game, anyways. That's OG, true. they're gonna walk into the Roshan pit. No tail. Realizes this is probably their last hurrah. They tried to sneak it last time around. A Helmet Dominator creep spotted them out. So no sneaky sneaky this time around. Actually tried to go for a smoke, but S4 was on the high ground. They know where he's at. He actually didn't bring to low ground. He needs to be able to get away. Echo. Here comes the Echo. Locking down three with his hair rise on the right side as well. That's going to continue to control up the Husker and pretty much take him out of this engagement. S4 is not dead yet. And Matt is taking all of the SCC's damage with his BKB. He's trying to finish off SCC and he will be able to get him. Maybe he can turn and fight the rest of these heroes. Nah, without his BKB, KP pretty much has him at his luxury. Yeah, no still gonna go for the Roshan though. He's still trying it. Yeah, and Mugi did not come for this fight at all. KP's all of a sudden like, okay, they're still inside. Now No Tail knocks him back with the Hurricane Pike. They do have the Oracle to be able to get a little bit of save there with the stun coming out. Maybe they can actually finish off KP, but the stun comes out for the Dark Will and No Tail. He He's is full. gonna be able to live. He's gonna be able to get to full HP. That takes away a lot of his attack speed though. Meanwhile, Faith, Dark Will, what a hero just going for it. But and look bottom, at bottom lane. It's gonna be Mega soon, boys. OG, who gives a damn about Roshan if you lose your base? Mugi's already taken the melee rack. Shapeshift is down, so Mugi. Mugi, he can't really outrun this one, so he will turn and fight and go for that range tracks and dare S4 and Jerex to kill him first, and they're just not going to be able to do it. Mugi's damage is too great. He finishes off, managed to get the Mega Creep back over to the Roshan pit. Mugi, he is definitely dead here, but maybe No Tail can at least get this Roshan and win the fight. Mugi, is he actually going to be able to kill S4? No way. Fisher Plock back over to the Huskar, managed to get taken out by SCC. It is a disaster on both sides. Newbie will be able to both take Megas and take the Roshan. Yeah, there's no sort of rebuttal there. They're going to call it. They understand that their lineup, so single target focus, cannot deal with these creeps. Newbie with an emphatic win, taking just 28 minutes in. And it all comes down, I think, to the first Roshan. Oh, yeah. They really needed that. And they contested it. They lost so many heroes doing so. I mean, we were watching an Ursa lineup before, and I brought up the same point at the end of the game. We've always said Ursa lineups, now Huskar lineups, they are very Roshan dependent. You cannot lose Roshans. Yeah, those heroes operate on that principle because they're a little bit greedy to begin with, mm -hmm. especially Ursa and Huskar. Like, they jump in. Yeah. And so you're going to commit your life most of the time, and so you need the second life to go for the push right after. Yeah. And if so you don't get the Aegis... You don't win the laning phase, and you don't get the Aegis... Like, they're, those are your two win conditions yeah. right there. You can't have both of them fail. There was just a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes made by OG when it comes to, like, the individual skill. Yeah. Like, they just, some misclicks, things like that happen. They have to shore those up for All game right. number two. OG's got to wake up. Game one was not up to their standard that we expect from the OG lineup. So we're going to take a break. Hopefully OG will be able to compose themselves and get to a game two looking a lot better.